Hello, Kathleen. We've got Kathleen Hall for this edition of DPAA Short Connects. I appreciate you joining us. Kathleen is the Corporate Vice President of Brand Advertising and Research at Microsoft. And uh, thank you for joining us. And, and tell us, how are you faring? And then who's in your studio or your house at the moment? Uh, we're faring pretty well here in Seattle. You know, as you know, we kind of got a jump start on the rest of the country. Right. Uh, I think we're in... It's either week three or week four of the work from home, and I am in my house in Redmond, Washington. It's a you know a nice kind of open area, so we have a lot of distance between us and our neighbors. And in my house are my 25-year-old twins, one a fourth grade teacher, one working towards his master's and was student teaching. My sister, who came out here to kind of uh, explore Seattle, her daughter, who was in school here, so we're all hunkered down, and there are four dogs. <laughs> Is everybody getting along? You got a big gaggle there. You know, we got a lot of space. It's funny. We got a lot of space and a good, and, and we kind of have fun at night. My sister's a cook, which is good because I'm certainly not. And uh, we're doing a lot of games at night. We're playing some good card games, watching some mass Singer and some Voice and uh, a lot of outdoors. We go for good walks, of course, to keep the dogs sane. So, you know, it's it's almost, uh, I think the first couple of weeks were super rough because the pace is just insane. And somehow sitting in front of a screen for the same amount of time we probably sit in meetings just felt so much worse. Like we were just so stressed. And we've gone to a couple, oh, by the way, my husband, which is still, he still exists, he's in Florida. He kind of got caught in the, you know, where should we go? Should I come home? Should you come down here? We had some time planned there. So we're, we're kind of distancing right now, but it's a... Uh, that's, it's, that's big social distancing. So, I, you know, on the work front, I think, um, you know, we have a lot of training and tools at our disposal at Microsoft that we probably were a little more used to than most people. You know, Teams has been a godsend for us. Um, I, by I the way, I say to everybody that we're doing this on Microsoft Teams and the, the quality looks great and uh, the usability has been very facile for us. Yeah, it's great. You can, you know, we were just working out like who shows up on screen and we can post and share stuff right here in the messaging board or someone can say, hey, your hair looks terrible. Fix it. I don't care. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it, it is. It's been really great for us and our customers, too. I mean, the, the time and energy that was put into getting everybody we could get up to speed from hospitals and researchers and you know, Metropolitan Police in London, the University of Bologna in Italy, the University of Burgoyne in France. Like there's just, it, it's just so rewarding, I think, when there's a challenging time to have an activity that adds value, sure. you know, in, in your work, which this does. So, you know, that's been a big part of our focus as a company. And, you know, I would say knock on wood, so far so good. We seem to be uh, obeying the distancing and it seems to be having effect out here in Seattle. And how are you? How are you kind of motivating your teams and keeping everybody connected and keeping everybody motivated and keeping everybody feeling okay? I mean, it's a challenging time all around. It is, you know, and I find um, it seems like more conversation and casual works really well. I wrote what I thought was a silly mail, kind of the first weekend on my personal learnings and experience. And the thing, I must have had 90 responses in about four minutes. And then I'm talking to our legal counsel the other day and he said, oh my gosh, I saw that mail you wrote. We thought it was so great, but it was stupid things like, you know, I, where's the Kardashian filter? Like, I, I don't care about, I want, how do I, when I take a shower and do my hair, I look like I'm still posing for a mugshot. So why bother? Like uh, the kinds of things we experience or like how minutes matter now. Like, can I get to the kitchen, make a sandwich, get a drink and get back in the two and a half minutes I have till the next, like crazy stuff. But I guess it was things that, you know, so many people were experiencing that it, it felt good to air it. So I think casual communications like mails and, and, and sharing, you know, I got to a store and got toilet paper and my family took a picture of me like triumphantly and my brother created a series of us winning at cans and finding toilet paper. And he's like, you seem more excited about the toilet paper than the titanium at can, you know, so. <laughs> And I think that, that, you know, while we're in a very serious time, humor helps, you know, it helps to kind of focus on the positive. Oh. You know, one of our, uh, one of our staff members set up yoga in the mornings for the team to join in. And from eight to nine, she runs a yoga on teams. Right. And uh, my son working on his master's had done a bunch of um, PowerPoint presentations to music for kids because he's got to teach remotely to do warm ups and stretches and exercise. So I thought, I got a bunch of parents on my team. Let me post these. And people loved it. They're like, you know, just silly little, you know, fun music, do some stretches. So I think those little kind of stay in touch, recognize the situation, personal touches are really working for us. And then big meetings work too. We had a 
you know, 40, 50 person manager meeting. We've had Satya do a bunch of exec briefings that we have, you know, every couple of weeks and, you know, we have, it facilitates it great. So sure. I think more connection is better in these days. That's good. You're, you're managing your teams. You're managing a huge household. Uh, you're, and at the same time, you're, you're managing and stewarding the Microsoft brand, uh, which has teams as one of the sub brands. Um, is there different messaging at this time? How are you looking at the, the global yeah, brand messaging? Really good question. I, I think, you know, we tend to be super in tune with what's the social kind of moray of the moment when we do our messaging in general. And right now, you know, I've seen a lot of ideas because people, people tend towards activity in, in a crisis to let's do something. I'm like, ah, I don't know. Like I look at some of this, you can't be preachy. You can't say we're through this. You know, you can't, this, this, it's a very narrow needle to thread through to be credible, authentic, and meaningful. I think meaningful is the point. Like, but what we decided was um, we had some thoughts around teams, you know, talking about making it available. It's free, by the way. It's free to everybody right now because we want people to be able to access each other. Um, and, you know, we thought that's a good message to get out there. So we, kind, we had a shoot planned early on. We were going to shoot real people and then boom, no shooting. So then being creative, we thought, well, well we can do this. I can, I can record actual entities. Can, and we, we went to people and said, hey, Metropolitan Police in London, will you record some of your meetings? Absolutely. Hey, the, you know, universities, some Texas Children's Hospital. So basically we've gotten that footage and it's, it, I mean, it is just straight to your heart. Not only their thankfulness and appreciation for what Teams does and has done in their lives, but also the work they're doing through it just makes you so proud. It just, it, you know, it's amazing. And it's, you know, the world's running. It's just running differently. That's right. And it's good to be working at this time on something that you know you're, you're helping society and helping the needle. We developed a whole public service campaign, uh, which has worked very well. And I think it does all our hearts good that we can contribute in, in a way. So look, you've got some amazing experience. You've been about 10 years or so now um, at, uh, at Microsoft. You were at Fidelity before that and even Y&R. And, and you've seen that advertisers that you know, pull back in these times have a tougher time climbing back. You know, if you, you limit the advertising and marketing budgets, the share of voices gets really challenging, the share of market does. How do you kind of plan for now in the future, given that there's a lot of questions more than answers in terms of timing of this all? Yeah, and Barry, this is unique in that, you know, we have all the data about what marketing through a recession accomplishes, which generally is if you stay strong and stay focused, you generally grow share and come out stronger. Right. This is different in that it's a recession layered under a, you know, a global pandemic. So right. it, it, it just is extra sensitivity and tension around what's appropriate to be pushing right now at all. And, um, you know, I think we, our tendency has been to pull back and to be a little quieter and a little more respectful of, of the situation. And then if anything, I think you'll see, we, we put teams out there as our offering to the world to try and help get them through this. Um, you know, coming out of it in when it's, I hope, I hope just the one of the two, when we're kind of dealing more with the economic, right. I believe we are of the mind that, that we invest to help others. I think one of the goals we have coming out of this is how do we help small businesses get back on track? Mm -hmm. That's you know, those are the people who are going to be hit, hit the hardest. And that's some of what, you know, I got to say, too, I know it sounds corny and I'm usually the, the anti-schmaltz person, but <laughs> I don't think I've ever been prouder to work for a company than I am to work for Microsoft right now for a couple of reasons. One is we took action so early and so definitively at a time when people kind of went, huh, why would you do that? Including us. We're like, why are we going home? And I think ultimately, you know, when the when the history books and the data gets analyzed, it probably helped the world. It probably helped America because we did it fast and definitively. So I'm proud of the, the SLT for making those decisions. And then also our immediate decision to help our, uh, you know, less fortunate workers or less, um, you know, senior workers and our uh, vendors and supporters by continuing to pay them through this. I mean, you got to it, it just makes us all really proud. So. You know, we have a legacy of helping our community and helping our um, support teams. And I think that there's no better fulfillment of that than saying, we got gotcha. you. We, we're going to take care of you. So that's important and so important. If we kind of go to the 
the normal world, may it be so, at some time and soon, programmatic has certainly grown in the whole advertising world. And a lot of people are saying it's grown possibly importance now and in the future because of the, the nimble nature of it, the flexibility of it. Have you been involved in that and do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think that is the advantage, the nimbleness, both in terms of um, activating, deactivating, shifting, geography, you know, target. Yeah, I think the, the flexibility is super important in times like these, and I think it's been a benefit. Um, at the same hand, I think that finding the points of community and togetherness are really important. I don't know if you in, you're into Tiger King. I mean, what the heck? Yes, we're all watching it here. <laughs> We'd be watching this if we weren't stuck home. I'm not so sure, but it's something. So the right. idea that we need that common currency as a community still, so supporting you know bigger programs and outreach, I think is going to be important as we go forward too. We're actually working with a few live productions that need to change how they do their work. I can't really talk about it right now, but you would know the the brand names on television, and it's a super in interesting challenge. And I think. One of the interesting questions for all of us, both in how we work and maybe how we produce and how we execute programming and content is, will it go back to the way it was? Like how, how have we changed for good in some of this stuff? Sure. What would you give media owners? You know, you're familiar with our digital out of home space. What are you, what are you kind of guiding media owners these days in terms of plowing through and to anticipate? I kind of feel like, you know, be a little slow and thoughtful. Like I think everyone's going to want to put the pedal to the metal on recovery and normalcy. And I, I don't think it should be a zero to 60. I think it's going to be put it in first gear and, and cruise for a little bit for a while. So I think um, collectively not feeling more pressure as an industry would probably be a good thing. I also think that maybe part of the positive change that will carry forward is a, a greater sense of togetherness and unity and commonality. And I think we should... You know, I, I look at digital out of home as a great vehicle for once people get back out, what better way to reinforce the fact that we're back out and together than having to be in front of me. You know, sure. I think there's some good opportunity for that commonality. Um, so, yeah, I think that's kind of my theme is going to go slow and think about the positive application we can achieve post this. That's some great, great guidance there. You know, we're all working at home. You've got a great gaggle, as we spoke about earlier. What do you kind of get in terms of personal inspiration? We're going to turn, we're going to, turn to this. Here's the audience. Oh. <laughs> they are so thrilled with our subject matter. <laughs> <laughs> what are their names? Uh, that is Mowgli and Tuck. Nantucket and Mowgli, yeah. And they're both tucked in very nicely together there, it looks like. Oh, yeah, they that's their position until I move. And then it's like, are we walking? Are we walking? Right, right. <laughs> so your husband can maybe stay in Florida. You've got enough company, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although I need a, another dog walker. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, Kathleen, you've been a pleasure as always. Thanks for your your guidance, your, your work effort, and most importantly, really for what Microsoft is doing to to kind of move the needle when it's so important that companies band together and, and help serve communities and, and the country. And it sounds like Microsoft is really doing that and you're all being very thoughtful about it. You're a, you're a great steward of the Microsoft brand. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm honored to have the opportunity.